The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. You are welcome to this session. I am Afro Augustine Enna, your biology teacher. This topic, Reproduction in Plants, contains the following lessons. Need for reproduction and types. Types and agents of pollination. Fertilization and seed structure, seed dispersal and qualities, germination, types of asexual reproduction, natural vegetative propagation, artificial vegetative propagation, advantages and disadvantages of vegetative propagation. We'll begin with the correction of the assignment given to you last lesson. You were asked to list the advantages of sexual A, sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction leads to variation when the offspring are different from their parents. And that gives them a better adaptation to, the, to environmental changes. In sexual reproduction, there are fewer offspring produced, thus reducing overcrowding and competition. Asexual reproduction. Only one parent is involved. This is an advantage because time and energy is not wasted to look for the other parents. The offspring are genetically identical to themselves and to their parents. Genetic identicality means that the offspring are genetically stable. And uh, if the parents had an advantage, where they normally uh, uh, it had an have an advantage in the environment. The offspring will equally have the same advantages in that environment. Our lesson for today is entitled Natural Vegetative Propagation. This lesson shall be examined following this plan. We will begin with the learning objectives, the previous knowledge, real life situation, then lesson activities, exercises, and an assignment will be given by the end of the lesson. Learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, learners should be able to list the different types of organs of natural vegetative propagation. Identify the different organs of natural vegetative propagation. Previous knowledge. Learners should be able to, uh, learners should have knowledge on the following. The characteristics of asexual reproduction, the different types of asexual reproduction. Let us look at the real life situation of this lesson. A from two student was astonished to notice that Irish potato Irish potato tubers that remained beneath the soil in his mother's farm in the previous harvesting season started germinating at the beginning of the rainy season, whereas cassava tubers in the same farm did not. Let us look at the scientific problem of this real life situation. The scientific problem here is the cassava tubers did not germinate into new plants at the beginning of the rainy season. 
whereas the Irish potato tubers did. How could this have been possible? This leads us to our hypothesis. The first hypothesis, the cassava tubers have less food store than the potato tubers. Cassava tubers are slower to germinate than potato tubers. Cassava tubers have no bulbs, while potato tubers have bulbs. By the end of this lesson, we will verify which of these hypotheses is or are correct. Let's go into our lesson activities. Activity one, critically observe and identify the pictures below. Look at this picture, picture A, B, and C. Can you identify these pictures? Looking at these pictures, we'll see that picture, picture A is a leaf. The leaf is different from other vegetative leaves because the leaf has buds. You can see clearly here a bud. And uh, this bud here begins to grow, begins to develop adventitious roots, begins to develop a root system, showing that this leaf can grow and develop into a new plant. B here we have a, a ginger rhizome. This ginger rhizome equally have buds. You can see a bud here. And uh, the bud begins to produce adventitious roots. And this bud can grow and germinate into a new plant. We have here a tuber. A tuber is a swollen root which stores food. This tuber begins to produce a bud here. You see this bud. And the bud grows and develops into a new plant. So, we have seen that A is a leaf, B is a rhizome, an underground stem, or ginger, and C is a tuber, a swollen root. Now, what is the general name given to the following parts of plants? Leaves, roots, branches, buds, and stems. The general name given to these parts of plants is known as vegetative parts of a plant. The growing of plants using these vegetative parts, we have seen that these vegetative parts are able to produce buds and to produce adventitious roots which develop into new plants. The growing of plants using these parts is called, we call that vegetative reproduction or vegetative propagation. That leads us into our topic, the notion of vegetative propagation. What is vegetative propagation? It is the growing of plants, of new plants, using vegetative parts. When you use a vegetative part of a plant, you can grow and develop a new plant. The ve a vegetative part of a plant is a part such as a root, a bud, a stem, a branch, or a root. These parts are sometimes called organs of perination because they enable plants to survive from one year to another. They enable plants to survive from year to year because of the store of food and uh, because they contain buds. Now, let us look at organs of perination. Organs of perination involve creeping stems. These creeping stems could be runners or stolons. When we talk of runners, runners are simply creeping stems on the surface of the earth, while stolons can be creeping stems on the surface of the earth or below the earth. And uh, stolons always have short internals whereas runners have longer internals. You can see an example here of a runner. A here is an example of a runner. Common plants in our environment which are runners are potato tubers. Potato tubers, they can 
they, they, they have creeping stems which creep on the surface of the earth. We have tolerance. You see, this is a creeping stem. It can be below or it can be above the soil. Let us look at the second activity. Observe and identify the following vegetative propagation organs. Let us look at these organs of vegetative propagation. Can you identify these organs of vegetative propagation? Here we see the organ A. Organ A here is a plantain sucker or banana sucker. You can see that this sucker produces lateral stems which develop buds. You see, a bud is growing here. And these buds can eventually produce adventitious roots and develop into new plants. Each of these buds will grow and develop into a new plant. B is an onion bulb. The bulb equally has a bud. See here, this is a bud. And uh, the bulb can equally produce adventitious root system. These adventitious roots absorb water and mineral salts from the soil for the development of this organ and equally functions for anchorage to hold the plant firmly to the soil. We have C. C here is a cocoyam comb. This comb contains a bud and this bud eventually produces these small adventitious roots around it which enables this uh, comb to absorb water and mineral salts from the soil for its development and for anchorage. So, what is common to these organs is the ability to produce buds. These buds can cause these organs to grow and develop into new plants. Now, the answer here, A is a plantain sucker as we have seen, B is an onion bulb, C is a cocoyam co. Generally, they are called underground. Are they A? We see their roots, underground stems. Are these stems or roots? They are generally called underground stems. They are stems. The stems can also act as organs of vegetative propagation. Underground stems and their shoots. Some underground stems and their shoots, uh, 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 some underground stems can produce short lateral branches, which develops into terminal buds. And uh, these lateral branches can produce new shoots, which develop into new individuals. And they can also produce adventitious roots, as we have seen on the diagram. The underground stems should be able to store food. And the numerous buds, and the produce numerous buds that give rise to new plants. What is the importance of the store of food? The store of food will enable these uh, organs or, or these plants to survive from one year to the other. So that during unfavorable conditions, the store of food is used up and that enables the plants to continue with life. Examples of such organs, on the, uh, examples of underground stems, which act as organs of vegetative propagation, as we have seen above, are rhizome, tubers, which are swollen stems, suckers, cones, and bulbs. Now, let us look at the different types of vegetative propagation. There are two different types of vegetative propagation. We have natural vegetative propagation and we have artificial vegetative propagation. For now, we will deal with natural vegetative propagation. We get into activity three. What is the meaning of natural? Natural simply means without human intervention. So the type of vegetative propagation in which a vegetative plant, a vegetative part of a plant, a vegetative organ develops into a new plant without human intervention 
is known as natural vegetative propagation. Keenly observe and identify the pictures below concerning this natural vegetative propagation. Can you still identify this organ? This is a cocoyam co. You can see it producing a bud. B here is a, a, an Irish potato tuber. It still produces bulbs which can grow and develop into new individuals. We have the cocoyanko A, an Irish potato tuber B. Keenly observe and identify the, these pictures. Can you identify this once again? We said that this is an onion bulb. You can see here it has uh, a bot, and this is a ginger rhizome. You can see the buds growing into young plants and adventitious roots originating from where the buds arise. We have C is onion bulb, D is ginger rhizome. Can you still identify this? We have here our banana soccer or plantain soccer. You can see identify the buds, and we have rhizome. For example, this can be a spear grass rhizome, which is able to produce buds, and where it can produce buds at the nodes. We can find that adventitious roots are also originating from the nodes. All of these organs are organs of natural vegetative propagation. They can undergo natural vegetative propagation. We have D, we have said is a plantain soccer, and E, spear grass rhizome. Now, that leads us to our topic, the natural, veg uh, natural vegetative propagation. It, we have said it occurs by natural means. That is without human intervention. A vegetative part of a plant grows and develops into a new plant. The plant reproduced by means of underground storage stands. All the organs we have seen up there, uh, we have seen above, are underground storage tanks which are concerned with natural vegetative propagation. These underground organs should be able to store food and to produce bulbs, which will enable them to develop into new plants. The stored food will enable the plant to survive on favorable conditions, and that enables the plants to survive from one season to the other or from one year to another. The ability of plants to survive from one year to another is, is called perination. The birds develop new foliage leaves and adventitious roots. And as we said, the foliage leaves, they function for photosynthesis. They can carry out photosynthesis using their, their green leaves. And the roots absorb water and mineral salts from the soil and also function for anchorage. Let us look at organs of vegetative propagation in form of a table. Let us summarize these organs in form of a table. We have tubers, which are underground storage stands, uh, 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 storage stands, which are swollen. They are, sorry, underground storage roots, swollen roots. We have here Irish potato, for example, we have sweet potato, we have yams, and we have cassava. We have runners. They are creeping stems on the surface of the earth. We have uh, sweet potatoes as an example. We have tolons. Tolons are also creeping stems. Example here is elephant grass. We have rhizomes, like the ginger rhizome, the spear grass rhizome that we have observed, canna lily rhizome. We have bulbs, like the onion bulb we have observed. We have garlic, which is used as a spice. In, in food. We have cones, like cocoyam cones, which are common in our environment. We have suckers, like bananas and plantain suckers, 
and we have bobbins, like pineapple bob bobbins. Now, let us verify our hypothesis. How could it, it have been possible that the Irish potato tuber could grow and develop into new plants, whereas the cassava tubers could not? The first hypothesis here, the cassava tubers have less food stock than the potato tubers. Second hypothesis, cassava tubers germinate slowly than potato tubers. The third hypothesis, cassava tubers have no bugs, while potato tubers have bugs. We have seen from our lesson that organs of vegetative propagation should be able to produce bugs, like we have seen here in this Irish potato tuber. The Irish potato tuber that remain on the ground on the, on the father's farm could produce bugs, and these bugs could grow and develop into new leaves, which begin to carry out photosynthesis. And uh, in this area, adventitious roots could also originate and uh, grow downwards into the soil to enable this tuber to absorb water and mineral salts from the soil to enable the growth of these new plants growing from the bulb. The cassava tuber here has no bulbs. You can see it's smooth, there is no bulb, so it is unable to produce adventitious roots. So cassavas cannot be grown using tubers. Cassava can be grown using stems. Let us look at these exercises. We have the first question. Natural vegetative propagation, A, requires human intervention. B, is slower than artificial vegetative propagation. C, does not require human intervention. D, does not require underground organs. Which of these answers is correct? The correct answer here is C. Natural vegetative propagation does not require human intervention. Question two. Identify the organ of vegetative propagation indicated on the picture below. Can you identify this organ of vegetative propagation? Let us look at the options of the answers. We have A, rhizome, B, tuber, C, soccer, D, coal. The answer, the correct answer here is B, a tuber, an under, underground swollen root. Now, question three, organs of vegetative propagation are also called organs of perination because they, A, can produce new bulbs, B, germinate faster than seeds, C, survive in one season only, D, can survive from year to year. The correct answer here is D. They are called organs of perination because they can survive from one year to another. Four. Swollen roots, which serve as storage organs, are called A. Tubers. B. Rhizomes. C. Bulbs. D. Runners. The right answer here is A. Swollen roots which serve as storage organs are called tubers. For example, we have seen the, the Irish potato tuber which germinated in our real life situation. For our assignment, the first, the, the A part of our assignment, what is vegetative propagation? B, differentiate between natural 
and artificial vegetative propagation. Make sure you do your assignment, for it will serve as previous knowledge in our next lesson. For our references, we have contemporary biology from two by Chwati and others, the 2018th edition. We have Understanding Genius Secondary Biology, book two, by Tapong Sylvester, 2015 edition. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be entitled Artificial Vegetative Propagation. See you next lesson. Una tege si, ma tege yop. Una tege minga, ma tege nyum. Una tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mut. Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esa kina bia jinki do. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam atonge tam zabike tam 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 amote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen 